So at Fortran Industries, um, we're looking for uh, opportunities to uh, do many, many things. And real quick, uh, it's here in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, it's one of the largest, if not the largest, PPS plants, uh, polyphenylene sulfide. It's a high-grade polymer that they make there. We have here, how do we do the laser thing? Ah, oh, there we go. So we got the, the two units. It's a relatively small plant. Um, so any kind of little savings at this place was greatly measured. Uh, here I'm uh, with Brascom today in uh, Brascom. Uh, they're mostly uh, with uh, polyethylene, propylene, PVC, uh, uh, hydrocarbon manufacturing. So we've got uh, five sites, chemical sites here in the U.S. And at Fortron, the control system we had uh, was uh, Honeywell Experion. Uh, had, actually had two of them uh, linked together, roughly 6,000 I.O. Uh, we had alarm management server, uh, data historian, loop tuning server with plant triage, just kind of give you an idea of what we had at the site there. So going forward, we were looking for, actually me I suppose, looking for uh, I ways to identify opportunities without the data mining that you typically find yourself having to do. So uh, we were looking for reduced equipment failure, you know, improved reliability, and so on. So. As you know, in today's uh, environment, typically we find ourselves with a little bit of a reduced staff, and it's hard to find time to do the data mining and staring at trends all day to see if there's something that needs attention or not. So one of the things that we worked with, uh, it was uh, Im implemented from my predecessor there uh, with Honeywell's Profit Loop. It's, uh, it is a tuning solution, just, just, not a, just not a complete, this just wasn't a complete solution. It just didn't have the knobs that we needed to do the typical tuning, just, just for tuning stuff alone, much less identifying opportunities beyond that. Um, so again, in the reduced staff, we had many complicated loop configurations just like any plant. So it was hard to find the time to do the tuning, much less find them that, uh, when, when, it's, when things are needed to be done. Um, so, going into this, um, you kind of find yourself wanting to ask, you know, ask these questions like, you know, with, with the control system that we had, you know, at Fortron, it was, a, you know, it was, a, it was a Experion migration that was done some years before. Lots and lots of money was spent, invested in that control system. So, you know, it's doing its job, you think, and it's like we kind of step back and find yourself thinking, well, how do you measure this? How do you really know how your control system is performing. How is it running? What, what is there, what information is in your control system that you can use to really measure as a KPI to keep track and, and know how things are running? Again, so more constraints were, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day thing, me and myself, while there, I was pretty much, well, I was the control engineer for the whole site. You know, just me, myself, and alone. So I did everything from networking to server troubleshooting to controls to automation recipe pi new tags all that stuff so where do you find time to work on projects to do tuning or to identify issues that uh, that need to be looked at and again it was just one of those things so um, with the control system you find yourself again asking these questions you know, alarm management. You know, we had the alarm management. It gave me the KPIs on a daily basis. It was almost, uh, it was kind of a thorn. <laughs> you know, I'm always getting my uh, average alarm rate thrown at me and then operations are, you know, barking at me a little bit. So that was the KPI, it was there. Um, you, you do your, uh, uh, your alarm rationalization, but you can't stop there. You have to maintain it, make sure that it's continuing to do what you want it to do and not just do your alarm rationalization and maybe be done with it. Same thing here. Um, it's not just a matter of loops that need to be looked at. It's, it's what, what doesn't need to be. In other words, if you have opportunities out there that's not necessarily a, a tuning issue, it may be a valve that just needs to be worked on or replaced. It's got a bad actuator. Who, who, who knows? So as we moved into the, uh, 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 executing this project, um, up front, it was, it was not a whole lot of uh, 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 you know, overhead for myself. 
Um, I, me personally, I decided to, uh, to just kind of do it all myself, installing the software, configuring all the loops, and plug it into the plant, and then you get things like this. You get the results like this just right out of the box that tells you, hey, you got some areas that need to get looked at. Um, these are your, you know, you can give them money makers. You know that that's something that needs to be looked at. Um, you, you get the KPIs that you didn't have before, like how, how long something's in normal or not in normal. You get reports, things that are oscillating. Valves are running at their limits. They're fully open or running at almost closed all the time. All of a sudden, all this information in a nice, concise way was readily available to us. Also, of course, from a diagnostic standpoint, sticky valves. Uh, anybody know what stiction is? Kind of explains itself, yeah? So any percentage of sticky, excuse me, stiction is a bad thing. You don't want stiction. Also, with uh, hysteresis, when you have valves running at their limits, again, this information was presented to us right out of the box. Again, here's another example of something that it gives you is uh, uh, what they call an interaction map. Some of the stuff made sense. You can see things interacting with each other that made sense. But the things that didn't make sense, that these things, various loops that were interacting with each other, really kind of opened up our eyes and found some opportunities to work with that. OK, so here's an example of some of the things that you get with the reports with the uh, with the uh, different uh, oscillating points and opportunities to uh, look at. Um, so once we got everything plugged in, we got started collecting data. Um, we went into it knowing what our money makers, excuse me, our money makers were right from the get go. What was going to get our return? So in our particular uh, situation, it was steam usage. With our distillation columns, we got a 521 and a 2521 for lines one and two. And uh, so here, um, I've got a before, and this is just simple temperature right here. And the after result was pretty much night and day. It was just right out the box, not a lot of overhead. It was uh, leading up to this, of course, we a we, uh, little gun shy. You don't want to jump into something right out the way, you know, right out the box and doing something like this. So we did some non-essential stuff, kind of build the confidence a little bit. Because uh, with this package, of course, you get some, you know, some nice training. So you're all excited, you're ready to get some results. But before you jump in, you got to get some confidence level. And this was uh, one of the things we got soon afterwards. Um, again, same, same column. This is right here was the temperature and the level. And the thing about the level control with this particular distillation column was it directly affected everything upstream. So from a production rate standpoint, this was always a thorn, always a thorn. And after, I mean, again, it was just like night and day. The issues just went away. It was pretty gosh darn awesome. Now, this directly related to about, it's about eight to 12,000, depending on uh, steam cost. It always fluctuates like, I don't know, every other day, I suppose. So uh, we saw a return you know, immediately within a couple of weeks. Uh, here's another uh, 531 temperature uh, uh, control and level control for another column. This is a high temperature. Um, you know, it's, it's cutting something, some other uh, organics that were had a real high uh, boiling points. So, um, the before and afterwards here, not quite as, as it was with 521, but very, very measurable. And the thing about this one was the 531 distillation column, it works on hot oil. So indirectly, we saved energy with the load on the hot oil furnace. I, I didn't have really the, the time and effort to go and measure uh, what kind of uh, fuel oil that we were saving, but the load on the fuel oil system was clearly reduced on these two distillation columns because, of course, we had a 2531 as well. So moving forward, um, things that we got out of the box with this was valve repairs. We were able to get reports to let us know that, uh, you know, all this information that we didn't know before was there was kind of given to us with uh, the reports out of the box. Um, so 
Some things that we did, or I did, I suppose, was in regards to this stuff here, uh, put together some simple reports, and on a weekly basis, the maintenance department, the instrumentation department guys, uh, they're getting these reports with all these opportunities. They need their attention because just because something's oscillating doesn't need, mean it needs tuning. It needs to get looked at if it's a bad actuator or what have you. Um, and again, as we did this tuning, instead of having to bird dog the data and with daily trends, um, you, you implement it, you see the results are there, and you just let the built-in tools, the built-in reports give you the information and let you know, hey, we're starting to drift away a little bit, so it's time to go back and see what we need to do again. Um, let's see. So directly, some of the results that we got was we definitely got uh, increased stability. Uh, like I was talking earlier with the 521 distillation column with the level control, that was a direct result on the sifting and salt system upstream of that. Those were always difficult uh, components to, uh, to run. Uh, obviously, we did a little bit of tuning on those, but the load reduction from the downstream of that 521 distillation column was uh, directly related on stability. Um, the energy savings, again, was uh, uh, very measurable. And the operator interventions was reduced as well. They, they were able to put valves that ran probably in manual, gosh, I'd say at least 50, 75% of the time. And that got reduced to zero. We put them in cascade like they were supposed to do, and they just ran like it was supposed to do. So we get what we measure. And now we have all this information that essentially really was there all, the, all along, but now we're able to get it and measure it and, and monitor the KPIs with the uh, reports. Um, and with the payback, it was within weeks. I'd say once we deployed the package and got the data collection, I was able to tune not just these two distillation columns, but I was able to tune uh, both distillation trains. There was probably, I want to say, six or seven distillation columns on both trains. I tuned everything from feed, flow, level, pressure control, temperature control, multiple cascaded loops within less than two weeks. And within those two weeks, we were immediately getting our results. And finally, I'd like to go ahead and finish with um, saying that um, you know, in my experience over 15 years working with different software packages and different DCS platforms and PLC software, HMI packages, so on and so on and so on, they've all got their nuances, they've all got their tweaks and things that you need to deal with. I just wanted to say that it was really helpful, this particular software package, Plant Triage Out of the Box, was, was not buggy, it didn't have the issues that I had to deal with, it just made it so much easier to just plug and chug and get the work done. So that's it. <laughs>